What exactly is inside a submarine? Hello and welcome back to our channel. Submarines have always been a subject of wonder. While we've heard of them, in reality there are few people who've actually seen and been inside a submarine, and most of them are individuals who work for the Navy. In this video, we're going to discuss what's inside a submarine. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon below. Unlike what we've seen in the movies, submarines are mainly employed for military purposes. While they are used for sea exploration, it's seldom the case. The design and the layout of these exploratory submarines differ largely from those of the military ones. These submarines are as long as two football fields. They're also as tall as a seven-story building and are as wide as a three-lane highway. Pretty staggering dimensions, aren't they? It's only when the submarine fully emerges out of the water that its true size is realized, and this size is simply put, huge. They can be largely categorized into three. Fast Attack Submarines (SSNs), Ballistic Missile Submarines (SSBN), and Guided Missile Submarines (SSGN). These are operated and controlled by the military alone. Since they're all employed for the same purpose, they share a basic layout. Broadly, all submarines have three basic components: the operations compartment or the forward compartment, the reactor compartment, and the engine room. Depending on the nature and purpose of the submarine, it may or may not include the missile compartment and the maneuvering room. But before we can move on to each of the rooms, we must first discuss the compartment located in the sail of the submarine, which is known as the bridge cockpit, or simply called the bridge. The bridge. The sail, known as the conning tower during the Second World War, is from where the submarine is controlled when it's on land or the water surface. It's from here that the captain delivers commands. The space is rendered pointless when the weather turns ugly and rough and the waves are too strong to handle. The submarine is then brought underwater and controlled from the control room. The crew is at a small disadvantage as observation of their surroundings is limited to what they observe through the periscopes. When the ideal conditions return eventually, the bridge is brought atop the water once again from where the submarine is controlled. The Operations Compartment Within each compartment, there exist spaces that are delineated for different tasks. These spaces are known as levels. The operations compartment primarily consists of eight spaces. The control room. The control room consists of periscopes extending outwards from the hull. Mainly, it consists of the control panel, the helm, and the outboard. Using the rudder in place, the submarine is steered by the helm. It also directs the sail. The angle of the submarine is controlled by the outboard. The officers in charge for each of these components are present in the room at all times to ensure effective action. The chief of watch, using the panel, is able to control the buoyancy of the submarine. There are also combat control consoles, which allow the crew to control the launch torpedo, its speed and location. Sonar Room Run by the sonar men, this room acts as the ears of the submarine. Any contact or signal that is received when on the surface or when submerged is picked up and transmitted to the combat control console, where the location, distance, and range of the contact is estimated. More than receiving and listening for any contacts, the sonar men are tasked with monitoring and assessing any activity on their screens. Radio Room The radio room, true to its name, consists of equipment to receive and transmit signals. There are two consoles that connect to the radio mast present inside the sail. The rest of the equipment is for the purpose of encrypting and decrypting transmissions. While some submarines like SSBNs have a wire that has buoyancy and can sail atop the water to catch transmissions, the others have a floating wire that floats on the surface of the water while trailing some hundred yards behind the submarine. Torpedo Room This is where the torpedoes are stored and released from. In some submarines, such as the fast attack ones, the torpedoes can be launched from the room itself. When there are no missiles to house, the space is converted to serve as bunks. Birthing The birthing compartment is stacked with bunks that are three levels high. Each bunk is a small aluminum compartment. Under the berth is a space that's used to store personal belongings and a small locker that holds uniforms. There is not sufficient space for everyone to access it simultaneously. That's the way one has to live on a submarine with about 140 other people. 
heads. Bathrooms. The word head is an old marine slang term for bathroom. The bathrooms in a submarine face a heavy shortage of water and therefore are utilized with extreme care and caution. There are sanitary tanks which clear out the waste overboard. They could fall out of order if a toilet is flushed at the same time the tank is unloaded. Auxiliary Machine Room While the nuclear reactor is the most important source of power for a submarine in case of crisis, the emergency diesel generator present inside the auxiliary machine room is used to engage some basic functions and equipment. The control equipment, which regulates the atmosphere within, is also sometimes installed in this room. Battery Compartment The nuclear batteries found in submarines are quite small and drain quickly. They are set up in the battery compartment from where they function. As these batteries are very important, they must be handled and maintained with caution. The Reactor Compartment This compartment consists of the most important part of the submarine, the nuclear reactor. The reactor becomes increasingly hot and heats the water at the core which is sent to a secondary location. From there, it moves to the engine room in the form of steam in order to power the engines and the turbines, after which the steam condenses into water and moves to the reactor room once again, and this cycle repeats continuously. The Engine Room This room consists of all the important equipment, including means to access the main turbines, electrical circuits, oxygen tanks, and reactors. If this room is compromised, then the entire vessel could face an imminent collapse. For this reason, there are always spare components to replace the faulty equipment in this room. The Missile Compartment This is found only in those vessels that are built for combat. It comprises all the electrical and mechanical equipment that is required for launch. It can extend up to four levels and contain about 24 tubes for missiles. The vacant missile compartments can also be used for exercising and in times of medical emergencies. The Maneuvering Room From this room, the reactor or the plant is controlled. The room isn't very big and mostly holds four men where one is in charge. There are several panels, each coordinating with one plant and controlled by one officer. The duties that are carried out here include controlling the coolant pumps, generating electricity and operation of turbines. The control sends in propulsion bells that are controlled by an officer known as the throttle man, which are used to control the valves of the main engine. We have explored the complete layout of a submarine. Thank you for watching us. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until then, stay tuned.